What's up everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the Insta360 Go. Now, Insta360 recently came out with the Insta360 ONE R, which is a modular camera. Uh, but a little before that, Insta360 released the Insta360 Go. And it was crazy because of the promotion material, you would see uh, a little finger and kind of like alluding to the fact that the camera was hiding behind the finger. And at the beginning, I was like, yeah, right. This is probably going to be like a GoPro camera or something like that. It's going to be very small, but not as small to hide behind a finger. Maybe they're playing a perspective game, but here it is. Now, this camera is tiny, very, very, very tiny. And that is one of my favorite features about it. This camera can fit pretty much anywhere. And it comes with a really nice case that secures a camera with magnets. Now the Insta360 Go package kind of looks like AirPods Pro. I have actually picked the Insta360 Go instead of my AirPods and vice versa when I have them laying around in my desk. So definitely something to consider, but that's a testament to how tiny the whole situation is. In this case is actually how you transfer your footage to your mobile device if you have an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone and have an Android device, the case has a micro USB on the side where you can transfer your footage and interface with the Insta360 Go app. The Insta360 Go will set you back $199. There are a couple of different bundles out, but if you're interested in getting one, the link is down in the description. The camera has an f2.1 aperture. It has a 60 minute battery life with the charging case and eight gigabytes of internal storage. No, at the very beginning when I heard that, eight gigabytes of internal storage, I was like, what? That is almost nothing. But then using it, I kind of really got to understand how the whole situation works. This is a camera that was designed to record moments, instances. And it's very interesting because this camera actually records natively on a one-on-one -on -one aspect ratio, 2720 by 2720. But when you interface with the Insta360 Go app, you can actually export them either in vertical, 9 by 16 or horizontal 16 by 9 or you can make them a square but even better yet you do have the option to rotate and reposition the video for more dynamic edits and more entertaining edits to say the least now by default you can record video in 15 30 or 60 second instances but you do have the option to record slow motion video as well and time lapse now the time lapse functions really, really cool because it does allow you to record a longer time lapse. So definitely bring a book, some patience or a Nintendo Switch maybe because the standard presets are actually very, very lengthy. I actually ended up recording a 30 minute time lapse that turned out into a four second video, but that's a testament to the interval and the actual look the Insta360 is going for here. I'm not gonna lie, even though it was four seconds, the time lapse actually looks really, really nice. Now the Insta360 is water resistant. This is meant rain, splash, small little dive and quickly getting out of the water. Because at the beginning I actually thought that this was gonna be kind of like a GoPro replacement, but it isn't, it is something completely different. When looking at the camera, when you grab this thing, there is actually no buttons in the front. So I was always wondering, how do I operate this? How do I start and stop recording? And there is actually a small little button in the back of the Insta360 Go that you actually press once to start recording and press it again to stop, or you just let it record for as long as your preset. I have 60 second clips as a default preset because when I was filming in Las Vegas, if I saw something interesting, I made a longer clip out of that, which was really cool. But you do have the option on the app to customize this and make sure that whenever you tap on the button, it records a regular video for 15, 30 or 60 seconds. Now at the very beginning, I was actually just holding it like this in my hand and I was vlogging around, just moving it and then 
rotating it and I was filming this way. But notice that little circle at the bottom, that is where, that is your shutter, that's where you start and stop recording. And of course it takes pictures too, I forgot to mention that. The Insta360 Go kit that I received included a bunch of different accessories like adhesives, USB cables of course to charge, but one of them caught my attention and that is the pendant. Now the Insta360 Go came with this little pendant over here and the whole idea of this pendant is for you to wear it under your shirt and then just simply magnetically attach the Insta360 Go to it. So it's a hands-free operation. And even better yet, by pressing at the bottom of the camera itself triggers that button behind it so you start recording right away. This pendant method reminds me of the chesty mount that you would use for GoPros for example. So it's really cool to be able to wear it and walk around which leads me to another fantastic feature that Insta360 has had for a little while including on the Insta360 ONE X which is another camera that they make that I have and I love very much. If you haven't seen that video, check out the link below or the annotation so you can check it out but that is flow state stabilization. So I was able to walk normally without implementing ninja walk-in or anything like that and just simply record. But most important of all, being in the moment. If I was recording a clip while I was driving, I wasn't paying attention to the camera I was driving. If I was walking down the street or going upstairs, I wasn't focused on something else other than being present. So that's another reason why I really, really enjoy this camera is because it gives us the opportunity for us to enjoy but also record. Now because the back of the Insta360 GO is magnetic, I am able to attach it to pretty much any metal surface, whether it's a car or whether it's a staircase or anything like that, that gives you the option to create some crazy dynamic shots, whether it's you recording in a weird angle or tight space like footsteps or you just simply want to attach it to a metal roof and jump so you can capture like a top bottom. I can see myself using this as an over the head or as an additional complimentary camera for my videos. Now the cool thing about this little camera is that you can actually put it virtually anywhere. Right now it's sitting uh, where the sugar packets are sitting uh, at this diner and it's not noticeable. Nobody can see it unless you're looking for it. So it's pretty cool. What do you think Gabo? I think Insta360 did something remarkable with this camera in terms of the capabilities of mounting it, wearing it, and just being able to get creative and put this camera in places that otherwise we couldn't have placed it before. The one thing to keep in mind is the resolution. This is a 1080p camera. It does record at a slightly higher resolution, but you do need the application to interface with that. I've been able to create some really cool videos with their app because they have a bunch of really cool presets. If you're looking to create something quick and post it on social media, I definitely recommend you checking out the Insta360 Go app. It's very easy to import, cut, edit, tune, and trim down your videos. You can add some music on their application as well, which is a plus. They even allow you to customize the transitions and everything, which is fantastic. I think this camera can totally benefit casual users, families, or people that travel a lot and immerse themselves in experience and you would rather be in the moment instead of just holding something in front of you and making sure that you're in frame while you miss everything that's going on. I think that's the kind of person that would benefit the most from this camera. I know that I'm definitely going to continue to use this camera when I'm going out to Disneyland or other events that I want to capture content, but I might not want to walk around with something and get removed from that experience. But I want to know what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, 
drop them down there so we can continue to create relevant content for you. Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I'll catch you on the next one.